Hi guys, uh, this is uh, Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland uh, and this short video, uh, another video in our series of uh, videos dealing with portfolio theory, uh, theory uh, is going to deal with what's known as TELSER's Safety First Criterion. Uh, it's a, a, I suppose it's an extension of a RISE Criterion and CAT Tokas criterion, okay, in which in, in the sense that it involves, I suppose, uh, I suppose it involves quoting a particular acceptable minimum return level, and also a risk level, okay, and with them two is to find the expected return for a portfolio, and then to choose a portfolio that will achieve at least that particular that particular return level, okay. So I suppose really from a definition perspective, uh, Telser's safety force criterion is asked asking us to choose the portfolio that has the highest return, okay? Okay. so we have to choose the portfolio that has the highest return uh, once it meets uh, two safety first conditions or two safety first criterion. So maybe maybe I should write that down. Uh, tells your safety first criterion uh, is to select, is to select the portfolio, the portfolio, okay, with, with the highest with the highest return, okay, uh, with the highest return, uh, once but but forcing, but forcing its adherence, forcing adherence, adherence, okay, adherence uh, to a constraint, okay, to a constraint uh, which recognises both the risk level, which recognises, which recognises. Uh, both, both the risk level, the risk level alpha, and a minimum, a minimum desired, desired, okay, desired return, return level, okay, level, okay. Uh, let's call that or 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 L, okay, alpha and or L, okay. So we're going to be given RL and we're going to be given alpha and basically what we need to figure out is we need to figure out, uh, I suppose, what is the expected, what would be the expected return for a portfolio uh, with that return level and that alpha. Now don't forget, er, we already know, let's say let's say in this case, let's say we were to choose, I have a question here, okay, let's say we were, we were to choose the portfolio, which portfolio should we choose based off Telstra's criterion, where the lower, the lower acceptable acceptable risk okay let's say the lower acceptable return uh, sorry let's say return is two percent okay uh, and uh, the acceptable risk the acceptable risk level okay risk level um, is alpha is equal to let's say ten percent okay or zero point one oh okay now what we know is from a standard normal perspective okay so from a standard normal curve a standard normal curve okay uh, we know that the Z score, okay, that has 10% of the area, 10% of the area to the left-hand side, is actually minus 1.28. Okay, so just keep that in mind. We calculate that in a pre in a in a previous in a previous uh, video when we're looking at rise criterion and Katoka's criterion. Okay, we got this Z of minus 1.28. That's the Z that has 10% uh, to the left. So. Now for portfolio A, B, and C, we need to find out, calculate its return level, its expected return level. Okay, so let's see what we have here now. So we know, we know that we have the Z must be equal to uh, the minimum risk level uh, minus the expected return divided by the standard deviation. So for portfolio A, okay, well Z is minus 1.28, so minus 1.28 must be equal to RL, the minimum risk level that we're willing to accept. Don't forget, minus 2.8 is is the acceptable uh, is the acceptable risk level of 10%. That's what that's that Z score is is based off, uh, which has to be equal to RL, which is the minimum return level, 